So allergic rhinitis is allergic inflammation of the lining of the nose, but it can also cause lots of other symptoms. You can get allergic rhinoconjunctivitis, which also leads to um, inflammation of the lining of the eyes. And uh, when you have allergic rhinitis, it can also affect inside your ears. It can make you feel itchy at the back of your throat, your tongue. Uh, it can cause a bit of a cough. It can sometimes make your nose feel very congested. And in some people that have um, predisposition towards asthma, it can cause them to have an allergic cough. So allergic rhinitis is usually due to an inhalant allergen, such as seasonal allergens, grass pollens, tree pollens, uh, or wheat pollens, or molds. And then there are perennial allergens all the year round, such as house dust mite, cat dander, or dog dander, if the family lives with that animal. So the most common cause of allergic rhinitis in the UK is grass pollen allergy. And people who have grass pollen allergy usually get itching, sneezing, congestion, problems with rubbing their eyes, rubbing their nose between the months of May to end of July or end of August. And this can be particularly severe uh, on days that the pollen count is high. And there are many different apps uh, that can tell you when the pollen count is high. Secondly, it's house dust mite allergy, which can cause worsening symptoms in the winter when there are more house dust mite around, but are generally causing symptoms all year round. And often house dust mite allergy causes a lot of congestion, uh, feeling that you just can't get rid of a cold, um, can sometimes lead to headaches uh, and dark circles under the eyes. Uh, and that is something that um, affects a lot of people in the UK. And then after that, it's tree pollens and some of the other allergens, such as pet dander allergens and weeds and molds. I'll start with symptoms. So the symptoms that people describe in the nose is that they feel itchy in their nose, they'll sneeze, um, they have a runny nose, and their nose feels very congested and blocked. Also, uh, in the back of the throat, they can feel like mucus is trickling down the back of the throat and they can actually be clearing their throat a lot. So a lot of patients will <clears throat> do this to try and clear the mucus from the back of their throat. That's an important, important symptom. Uh, and in terms of the eyes, they get very itchy eyes. Sometimes the, the, the whites of their eyes can get very red and inflamed and swollen, which is very, very uncomfortable. And then people complain of itching inside the ears and they can complain of itching in the back of the throat and a dry, irritating cough at the back of their throat as well. So there are three aspects to the management of allergic rhinitis. The first is allergen avoidance. So once you know what you're allergic to, then you can effectively manage that and know how to avoid it. So there are some very simple things that you can do for grass pollen allergy, for example. So a lot of people dry their clothes outside because they think they'll get a nice fresh smell to their clothes. But if you do that during the grass pollen season and you're allergic to grass pollen, then all the bedding will be covered in pollen and that causes lots of symptoms at night. Uh, another thing is washing your hair after being outdoors all day, because again, all the pollen will go in your hair and then you'll be lying on that in your bed and rubbing your eyes into the pollen. Then house dust mite allergy, again, is very important to know about because house dust mite live in most of the soft furnishings in the home. It's almost impossible to avoid house dust mite unless you go to very high altitudes. So the main uh, way to avoid house dust mite is to buy mattress, duvet and pillow covers that are specifically designed for house dust mite and they trap the house dust mite inside because the house dust mite live from human sweat and then the house dust might die and their, their allergen isn't lifted up into the air every time somebody moves in the bed. So that's the first part. The second part is symptomatic treatment. Symptomatic treatment usually comprises of an antihistamine that should be a non-sedating antihistamine, so not pyriton or chlorphenamine. And then the gold standard for symptomatic treatment is nasal steroid sprays because they treat not just the itching and the running, but also the nasal congestion, which antihistamines won't treat. 
And then for the eyes, there are some very good eye drops that contain antihistamines uh, and other stabilizers for the allergic cells in the eyes, and they can be very effective. And those are the three main treatments that we use for allergic rhinitis. But some adjuncts can also be used like a saline spray before the nasal steroid spray. And uh, those, those are the main uh, symptomatic treatments. Finally, the third aspect of treatment and final aspect is immunotherapy. And that is a treatment where people can effectively take drops or tablets under the tongue for sublingual immunotherapy. And there's also subcutaneous immunotherapy available, which is injections, that changes the way that their immune system responds to that allergen. So instead of producing allergic antibodies, they will produce tolerant antibodies. And what that does is over a period of time, it reduces the number of symptoms that they get, it reduces how much medication they require, and is also the only treatment that actually alters the course of disease. So it's usually a three year treatment course. And after that, you can get, expect to get a five to 10 year benefit of having done the treatment. So it is a very um, uh, effective treatment. It is a safe treatment. The sublingual immunotherapy very rarely leads to significant side effects, usually just some itching and tingling in the mouth. So it is something that I do very commonly in my practice. Allergic rhinitis really can be a very serious condition. There was a study that looked at children that were sitting their mock exams in January and then compared their results in the peak of the grass pollen season around May and June. And they found that children who had grass pollen allergy during the exam period were likely to drop a grade from their mock exams. If they were taking sedating antihistamines, they were likely to drop two grades. So from an educational perspective, it is very, very important because it can affect your concentration at school, it can affect your sleep, and it can also stop you doing the things that you love, such as the children are often going outdoors and doing sports is something that they can't partake in because they have such severe symptoms. Allergic rhinitis can also lead to allergic asthma. So some children that are predisposed towards asthma can require inhaled steroids during the period of the grass pollen season, because what happens is that the pollens don't just go into the nose, but can get all the way down into the lungs and then cause the lungs to contract and to have breathing difficulties. And then allergic rhinitis, which is very chronic, can actually lead to sinusitis, where you get filling of the air spaces inside the head with um, fluid, and then this can become infected and can lead to um, headaches and fevers and feeling very, very unwell. So all of these uh, things are complications. And just to mention that the immunotherapy has also been shown to prevent asthma in children that have allergic rhinitis.